People tell us every week that our information has helped save their life. If you agree that this is helpful information, please like, share, and most of all, subscribe because nothing makes a channel like subscriptions. Melissa, can stable plaque become vulnerable plaque anytime? Yes, it can. I'm thinking COVID infection might do that. Yes, COVID infection has clearly demonstrated that it can increase that cardiovascular inflammation. No question, especially long COVID. One of the things that I see demonstrated over and over again in long COVID patients is their insulin resistance tends to go out the roof. You know, they get these 80 point jumps in their insulin requirements. Yes, very good point. Ariana Grande's ponytail. What are your thoughts on the coronary calcium score test? I think it's a great test. I'm 51, have a family history of heart disease. A mother died of heart attack thinking of bringing it up to my cardiologist. I definitely at least get that. Actually, Ariana Grande's ponytail, I'd suggest you get my book. The book goes into detail on how to evaluate plaque. And that's what a calcium score is all about. So there are three ways to not do it. Number one, rely solely on your doctor's understanding of a calculator. In other words, what risks do I hear in my age? That's pretty far off. The next thing they'll say is, well, let's do a stress test. Stress tests are really bad. They're only positive if you've got basically 50% or more blockage in flow. And the vast majority of heart attacks happen with let in plaque that's less than 50% blockage. The third thing they'll do is they'll say, go to the cath lab and inject some dye into those arteries and see what we see, arteriogram. That's not that good either. And in fact, once you've gone down that path, doctors are usually going to say, while we have you under, we're going to go ahead and have you sign to let us put a stent in if we see anything while we have you in the cath lab and anesthetize. So that's like Hell's triplicate or something. It's a really bad combination. There are three other things that I would recommend for evaluating plaque. One is the calcium score. The calcium score is great. It gives you some understanding of how much plaque you have. It's not perfect though. Those of us who do CIMT, for example, understand that you can have, but it all be soft and have zero calcium. In fact, that has actually been demonstrated. Despite the fact that the American Heart Association said back in 2018, look, if you've got a negative calcium score, you don't need statins. Science since then has demonstrated what many of us had feared, and that is, yes, there is risk for people with zero calcium scores because these are people that obviously have nothing but soft plaque. So to go back, you get about 20,000 feet, 30,000 feet. Don't rely on the doctor's risk, you know, just verbal and brain related risk assessment. Don't rely on a stress test. Don't rely on an arteriogram because you're going to get headed right down that shunt into a stent, which doesn't hurt you so much. So many stents have been done. So many arteriograms have been done that the danger to those is not really so much with the procedure. The danger from those is thinking that your plumbing is fixed and therefore you don't have to change your metabolism. The metabolism is what causes the problem. Cardiovascular inflammation, and again, four fifths of that mostly related to insulin resistance, prediabetes, diabetes. And that is a lifestyle related issue. Again, let's talk about three things that do better. One is the calcium score. One is the CIMT. We've had multiple discussions about CIMT. It's an ultrasound of the arteries in the neck. If you've got plaque in the arteries of the neck, we know that you have plaque in your heart. The advantage to that is it actually shows soft plaque, which is the critical piece of what we want to know. We've talked about soft plaque or vulnerable plaque multiple times already in this show today. Then the last item we've also talked about too, CT angiogram. So I do a lot of CIMT. I do a little bit of calcium score and a little bit of CT angiogram. I don't do stress tests. I don't do arteriograms and I don't do stents.